Hello, in this video we're going to look at the exponential family of distributions and show how to derive the mean and variance generically for an exponential family of distributions. Um, briefly we're going to look at the scalar when we have a scalar parameter and a variable. So let's say a sample size of one. And if your density or probably mass function can be rep represented in this fashion well, it's a function of the x's, a function of your parameter, a function of your x's again, or x, you know, and this is uh, some function of your theta. Now this, and so, if, if your density can be written in this form, then it's called an x, it's part of the exponential family. And where the functions th, eta, and a are all known, um, it should be noted that different forms exist. And one is since this is e raised to this power, you know, and this is you can you can take the product of and then have these exponentials and then call this, uh, you know, a, just a function of theta. Anyway, but there's different forms, but we're going to specifically look at this form. Um, uh, theta is your parameter. The support of this distribution doesn't depend upon the parameter, so a lot of times, like the continuous distribution that depends upon your parameter uh, doesn't uh, they don't fit into this exponential family uh, a of theta is called the log partition and a quick explanation of that is if you have a function that integrates something not to one it can't be a PDF because it must integrate to one so you divide by that number then forces it to integrate to one well whatever you divide by there is called a partition so you partition the function to make it a PDF. And it turns out that if you take the log of A of theta, or it might be the negative log of A of theta, then that's your partition for this exponential family. And so this is just generically called the log partition. Uh, T is a sufficient statistic, and we're not going to get into what a sufficient statistic means in this video but that's what it is um, and so that's it so you have a, a scalar parameter and variable and and very quickly let's look at if we have a scalar parameter and a vector variable so we take a sample of size n and so here this is the joint PDF and then if you can write it in this form then it's an ex part of the exponential family and this and this makes sense because you're really you're just taking the product of this and since this is e raised to this exponent and you have all these e's time you know multiplied by each other you add the exponents and so that's what this is saying so is your you know you're you're adding them up and you get this now let's say you have a vector parameter and a vector variable then you can write the exponential family in this form where these are vectors so let's see if we can yep still on the screen so um, say this is x is of dimension n your parameter space is di say dimension m and then these vectors eta could, is and t are dimension k and then it can be written like this so this is a vector product here so this is a column vector but transpose makes it a row and then this is a column so it's like adding them up this is your log partition oh one point here is that you know these the a of theta is different and so even though i write them the same the a of theta is determined you know it's the log partition so whatever its form is is determined to make the rest you know to integrate to one but you just generically write it a to the theta okay so this is pretty pretty standard stuff the next one is is called canonical form so we take what we just looked at and put it in a well we think about it in a different form and I'm just going to write it out for vector parameter and vector variable and because if a vector is of length one then it's back into the scalar and so if we can write it in this form so initially this was a function of the parameter but if you think of it just as you know if you reparameterize it 
is and you just think of it as a to one a to two a to three you know a vector then if you can write the PDF you know you can transform it into this form it's called the canonical form um, this is called the natural parameter and the reason that we write it in canonical form is it makes uh, taking the moments the, the mean and variance for example of our sufficient statistic the derivatives of this log partition and to me that's so mind-boggling cool I think that's why I'm doing these videos on the exponential family of distributions and I put two explanation marks because this is it's pretty exciting stuff um, so now let's let's this is what the video is about and we're going to prove this and the video is going to be too long so we're not going to do examples but in the next say 10 to 12 videos are all going to be examples of, of what we're talking about here so let's go through a note a few notes before we uh, prove this if we integrate the density it integrates to one I mean it, it has to so then if we take the derivative of both sides then the derivative of constant zero and we can pass that through the integral sign in the exponential family here and we get this now this is k so it could be any derivative the k derivative the first derivative second derivative so that implies that the integral of the first derivative is zero right it also implies that the second derivative is zero now number three if we let l be the log of our function so it's the log likelihood then if we take the derivative of l which means derivative of this it's one over f times the derivative of f and then the second derivative is the derivative of this and you can show that it can be written in this form now if we look at the expected value of the first derivative of the log likelihood then it's this so you take you know you stick in the the first derivative of the log likelihood times the density and integrate over the range of d of x well the the log likelihood was the first derivative of f over f so those the f's cancel and we're just left with this so by point number three it's this but then by point number two that's equal to zero and we're going to come back to this so the, the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood can be written like this here you'll get a you know you get a cancellation and and we don't know what that is so we just leave it in this form well this here um, we said by number one equals zero so this goes away and then this piece just comes down but f prime over f was the first derivative of the log likelihood so it's just l prime and then the squared is here um, well and since the mean of the first derivative of l the log likelihood is zero this ends up being the variance it's you know and then the minus the minus variance of the first derivative of the log likelihood now we're going to come back to these so now let's look at the log likelihood and we're going to do the scalar case first so the log likelihood is the log of the density which then if this is written in the canonical form is is this because this piece here is raised e to this power and the and the log cancels with it now if we take the first derivative of this with respect to eta this this is zero and then derivative of this is just t to the x and then it, this is we're going to call it a prime because it's some function of eta and that's what it is so the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative and and this is constant with respect to eta so it goes away and then it's just what we generically call the second derivative of a of eta now that's we have enough information to look at the mean of we're going to find the mean of us our sufficient statistic so if we look at the expected value of the first derivative of the log likelihood that's zero by point number four above 
Now let's put in what we know about the first derivative of the log likelihood, which is this. So you put it in, and again it equals zero. Well, this is constant in regards to the expectation. You know, this is in regards to x. So that comes out as a constant, and then we add it to the other side, we get this. So this is saying the, the expected value, or the mean of our sufficient statistic, is the first derivative of the log partition. And to me, that is just mind-boggling, okay? I'm going to flash up the canonical form here again. So this is the canonical form, and that is our sufficient statistic. And to find the mean of that sufficient statistic, it's, it's the derivative of the log partition. Now let's look at the variance. So here, the variance of the first derivative of the log likelihood by part 5 was minus the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood. So let's put in what we know here. We just showed that the first derivative is this. And the second derivative is this. Now, uh, if we look here, there's no x in this log partition. And so it's constant. So it, you, you just get it back. And then the, the minus is cancel. And, that, and so this just comes down. And so here, when you take the variance, and if you add a constant, it doesn't affect the variance. So it's essentially, you can take that out. And then it's the variance of t of x, so whatever that is, but that's equal to the second derivative of the log partition. And that's what we wanted to show. Now let's quickly do it in vector form and then call our quits for today. In the next videos, we're going to just do example after example, illustrating all these points. So if we have the vector form, so the x and the theta are vectors. Now they don't have, this, this is m dimension, this is n dimension. But it must integrate over 1, over this space, d of uh, x, where this is a vector. So if you take the derivative, say, the, the derivative of the first component of eta, you know, because since eta is a vector now, and it's in canonical form, this, um, so that's 0, and then the first derivative with respect to eta 1 is well, whatever it is. Now, as a reminder, if we let L be the log likelihood, the log of F, and then we take the derivative of both sides, we get this. So the derivative of log is 1 over, and then times the derivative with respect to eta 1. So if we look at the expected value of the partial derivative of L with respect to eta 1, we get this. So now L is the log likelihood, which we said was this. And we take the first derivative with respect to, or the partial with respect to eta one. This there's no this is constant, so it drops out. And this is a vector times a vector, but we're only taking it with respect to the first component. So we get the first component of this, and then times whatever the partial of that is. So this becomes just the first component of t, which is this and then minus the partial derivative of uh, the log partition with respect to eta 1. And it's equal to 0 by number 4, if you take the expected value of that. Well, this is constant in regards to the expectation, so it just comes out and you can add it to the other side. So the expected value of the first sufficient statistic is actually just the, the uh, partial derivative with respect to eta 1 of our log partition. And to me, that's just so cool, so mind-boggling. And then very a similar argument, you can find that the variance of the first sufficient statistic is equal to the uh, second derivative, second partial with respect to eta 1 of our log partition. Okay, so that's all I have for today. And in, in the next... Uh, I don't know, five to ten videos are going to be examples illustrating all these points. And uh, to me, that's just so cool. It makes finding the mean and the variance so much easier of these distributions. Actually, what would be very hard, in some cases, ends up being very easy. Well, if, 
that's all I have. Uh, if you liked it or enjoyed it, like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.